In this video, you'll learn the five steps you need to follow to build your DocuSign template in 2022. And if you don't want to waste all that time trying to figure out how to build your template, we can build it for you. Just send us a copy of the documents that you want a template for at template at solusign.com and we'll send you a quote. So today we'll cover what are DocuSign templates, how do they work and how to set one up. A DocuSign template is simply a reusable envelope that contains the recipients, the documents and the fields and even the rules. They allow you to speed up the sending process of your envelope to your signers. The template was stored in the uh, DocuSign templates tab of your DocuSign account and you can share them with the other users of your account. Before you set up your own template, you need to ask yourself, what template type do I need? There's four template types that you can choose from. First is a static document template for documents that look exactly the same to every recipient, like an application form. Then you've got dynamic document template for documents that contain text that varies. Um, think of an employment contract or a personalized letter. The third type of template is a CSV template. These types of templates allow you to send um, a different um, version of the same document to different people in both. And finally, you've got the PowerForm templates. Uh, when you want to make your forms available uh, on your website to signers who you don't know yet. But today we'll build a static template for this agreement that we need all our clients to sign. Uh, we, XYZ Consulting, uh, also need to countersign the document. So you'll also learn how to create a signing order in your template. Once the document is signed by both parties, so the, doc the uh, client and ourselves, we also want our admin assistant to receive a copy of the document so that they can file it. Now, let's do it. Once I'm logged into DocuSign, I'll navigate to the Templates tab. And if you can't see the Templates tab, it means that you don't have the right authorization uh, for your user profile. You need to reach out to your admin and ask them to uh, grant you those rights. Then from the Templates tab, you'll click on Create. And the very first step is very similar to the way you would create your envelopes. So you'll first need to add the uh, document in your template. We'll upload the um, NDA template, which is the document that we are working with today. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Sofian Saudi and I'm an ex-DocuSign trainer. I'm also the founder of Solusign Consulting, where we help businesses implement uh, DocuSign templates and integrations. So if you need help with setting that up, you can use the link in the description of the video to book a strategy call with me. And if you want to get up to speed with DocuSign quickly, you want to download my free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet, which includes all the useful stuff that I actually go through in this video. Same thing, you can find the links in the description down below. And so again, we uh, want to capture um, the legal company name. We want to capture the address from our client. And then on the last page, we also want the um, client uh, name, signatures, date, and we also want the signature for from us, the, the sender of the documents. So I don't need to add any other document into my template. That's the um, only document that I want it to contain, but I could add as many as I wanted to. Then when I click on next, my second step is to create placeholders for the recipients. So when you create an envelope, you already know who you're going to send the documents to most of the time. So you don't need to add a placeholder. You simply add a name and email for each of the recipients. When you create a template, you do know who some of the signers are going to be. For example, I know that I, as um, the um, person who is going to be using the template and sending it to my client will always need to be signing. So I can just add my name and email. So I'll just need to click on customize and add name and email. So I'll just add my own name and email for that. The uh, signing action needs to sign is correct because I need to apply my signature and that's fine. However, for the client, the client is always going to be a different person. So that's when you need to use a placeholder for the uh, for those kinds of the recipients who you don't know who they are going to be yet. So I'm gonna click on add placeholder. And then here, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna enter client because that's the type of person that's going to sign the document. I don't need to enter name and email because I will provide those when I will use the template to send the envelopes once my template is built. 
So for now, this is what needs to be done. I also need to add another placeholder because I want my admin assistant to be um, receiving a copy of those documents so that she can file and you know kick off the next workflow. So I'll click on add placeholder and here um, I just need to add the name and email of that assistant. And by the way, you can add a placeholder even if you know who the person is. So we can just say, this is internal signature, internal signer. And then uh, we can just say filing or admin assistant. However, before I um, validate and enter this person's name, I don't want to forget to change the signing responsibility. I mean, the recipient role action, if we, if we want to be super precise, and change this from needs to sign to receives a copy because our admin assistant doesn't need to sign a document, just do stuff once the document is signed. Um, so I want to add the name and email for the admin assistant because that's always going to be the same person and it's going to be Samantha Smith. So I can add Samantha's name and email in the uh, recipient list. And before I hit next, I need to set a signing order because I don't want uh, to sign before the client has signed. So I'm gonna start by the very beginning. Very first, I want my client to get the document. So I'm gonna go here and change this value from a two to a one, and then the client's gonna move up Actually, it's not because we still have these admin and DocuSign source those by alphabetical order. Um, then I want to sign second. So the internal signer is going to be, is going to go in position two. And then the admin assistant is going to receive a copy of the document once it's signed, not at the beginning. If I leave it as is, Samantha will get a copy of the document that hasn't been signed yet because she's signing in position one. I don't want that, so I'm going to change this value from one to three. And then we have the client signing first, the internal signer, and then the admin assistant uh, receiving a copy last. That's correct. I can hit next. And this is when I, um... by the way, if you haven't watched my video on how to send an envelope, DocuSign will take care of writing the envelope from one person to the next. So um, I will not receive a copy. I will not receive this envelope unless my client has signed the document and same goes for Samantha. She will not re be receiving the final document unless both signers that are before her in a signing uh, order um, complete their tasks. Now I'll click on next. And so this is the tagging page. This is where I tell DocuSign what to collect and who from. So to the top left here, I've got my client selected and all my fields all yellow. If I click on my name here, the field turn blue, so I know that the fields are for me. So I'm gonna start by the start, and I wanna collect the legal company name, address, email, and name of the contact person. And those fields will be assigned to the client because I wanna collect the information that relates to those fields from the client. So um, I'll use a text field here, and then I'm gonna expand that box and I'm gonna be doing the same thing for the address field below. I'll just click on my field and do command D that duplicates the field. And then I'm gonna do another field right here. And then for the email, I'm gonna be using the email field. I've already got the person's email. Um, if I enter, if I use a text field to capture the email, I'm forcing my recipient to um, you know, to enter an email address when I already got it, so there's no point doing this. And contact person, I also have the name of the contact person, so I'm just gonna use a full name field. So those two fields will merge the information that's gonna be added in the workflow when the person who's using the template uh, will send the envelope. Uh, however, those three fields will need to be populated by the person uh, who is filling it out. So if I navigate to the last page of my document, then this is where I tell DocuSign um, where to collect the signatures. And so I still have the client selected. I'm gonna start by the client. Here, I do want to have the client's company name. But if we think about it for a second, we are already requesting that information once earlier in the document. So we can use the data labels to only capture the same information once. So let me show you. If I change the label, which is DocuSign's unique identifier for a certain 
um, information, um, I can go back up and call my field here company name as well. And so what this will allow us to do is that the client who received the document will only need to provide the information once. So for example, if he enters here company XYZ, and if I scroll down, uh, this information will be copied here automatically. And that's awesome. That's what we want for the client. We do this to improve the signing experience. Clients don't have to provide the same information multi more than once, which really pisses them off. And mm, I'm pissed off as well when this happens to me. So now we need to request the signature. So I'm going to grab a signature field. I'm going to grab a name field, and then I'm going to grab a title field, and then I'm going to grab a date field. Now, if you're wondering, hey, why don't we give a label to those fields? I don't really care because those fields print the, um, the information automatically. The client will not need to do anything in those fields. The full name and the date sign will be happen will be applied on the document to the document automatically. The title might or might not, depending on whether the person has a DocuSign account. Now, because I don't want to build my field for myself, automatic um, one by one. I'm just gonna copy those fields and then I'm gonna do command D to copy my fields and drag them here. And before you tell me, hey, but that's yellow, or that's gonna be for the client, we just change them to uh, myself and I know that those fields are for me. Now, if I'm super OCD and I am, I'm gonna align my fields. So that's basically how you build your template. So now that we've added all the fields, I can click on next and then I can customize a few options. I can give a name to my template. So I'm going to call this NDA template because my document is called a non-disclosure agreement. I can save this. Then I can also include a message for my uh, recipient. So the default message is just please DocuSign NDA template, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of ugly. I want to make it a little prettier. So please DocuSign our NDA. And then I can also add a little thank you message if I want to. And then in the options, I also have the option to send automatic reminders, which I want. So I want my template to send a reminder to my um, client to sign this every day because I love harassing people. And then I can say that my envelope is going to expire seven days if I want to. If I do want to add a custom email language for um, a custom subject, uh, email subject and message for other recipients, I click on this. And then if I go back to my message, I get to customize what the what each recipient in the workflow is going to see. So for my client, I can just write, please DocuSign our NDA. Thank you. That's fine. For myself, as the sender, I can just write, please countersign the NDA or NDA for, and then I can insert a dynamic field. And so if I want to see the client's name in the email um, subject, you know, without having to open the envelope, I can just click on insert client's name. And then dynamically, when the person will, um, who is going to send this document to the client will enter the client's name in the workflow, the client's name will be, um, will be added to the subject line for me. And I can do the same thing for Samantha, whose uh, responsibility is to file the NDA. I can just say, please file NDA for, and then insert client's name. Now that I'm done, I can just click on save template and my template is available for me to use. Now, one last thing that you might want to do is you want to share that template with other users of your account. And so the way you would do this, you've got two options. You'll click on the little drop down and then you click on share to folders. Now, anything that you actually you first need to create a shared folder. So let's just call this one shared folder one, all users of your account have access to the shared folder. So if you want to share this with all users of your account, you just move this to the uh, shared folder. However, if you just want to share the template with one user specifically, then you go to uh, the little drop down and then you click on share with users and then you'll just select one of the users that you have or a group of users if you want to. 
and now to use the template super easy click on use the template and then you'll just need to enter the name and email for the client so let's just say that the client is bob smith there you go thank you bob always of great service um, and then you can click on send now if you do want to add some information before you send the document you can and actually a lot of people don't know how to add variables to the field so if i click on edit here docusign will allow me to make changes to the envelope i've just created based on the template so all the edits that you're making here are not going to impact the template you've built so if i click on next and let's just say that i already knew in advance bob's company name i'll just write you know company abc well company back whatever and then if I click on next, that's it. I can customize the rest of the stuff. And when I'm done, I can click on send. And that's it. This is how you build and use a template in DocuSign. Now, one last tip is that if you do want to save even more time with DocuSign, you need to learn how to use the rules. And so we've talked about the rules in the first video. You've got um, replication rules, you've got conditional rules, and you've also got validation rules. And this is what I'm about to show you in the next video. So bear with me if you want to learn how to save even more time and how to create the best selling experiences for your clients. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.